Well, this presentation was meant to be presented tomorrow, but we had to make a small change. So the topic is a bit out of scope, but uh, it addresses more the public perception of invasive species and, man and information. Well, this project was uh, done under the rationality that, okay, we all know <laughs> that invasive species pose a major issue in conservation. Uh, we, need that, we know that we need to build effective management pla plans for invasive species. We also know that charismatic species raise more ethical concerns than more uh, less charismatic species. For instance, animals raise more ethical concerns than plants when it comes to controlling them. And also, mm -hmm. <laughs> well, in general, on controlling invasive species, we should know how to tackle conservation, ethics, and communication, and public uh, engagement. So the main questions were, uh, what do people know about invasive species? Who knows what? How do people feel about invasive species and all the controlling invasive species? And what influences their knowledge and their attitudes towards invasive species? And of course, why do we need to know that? Because we need to be more effective in communication, in communicating this issue. Also, because as we saw uh, previously, the EU uh, regulation wants us to do prevention, early detection, management, but management is done also with uh, the cooperation of people that inhabit places. So it's important to know what people know and to engage them in the actions we want to implement. So this project took place in the Iberian Peninsula, in central Spain in and in central uh, Portugal. But uh, it also had an online component, so it spread a bit around the peninsula. So we had some, oh, sorry. Whoa. Service, service we took uh, with general people, adults and children or teenagers. Uh, we put the service, uh, the service on uh, Natura 2000 sites and on environmental educational centers and also online on a, a website and available in three languages. Unfortunately, no one from England responded. <laughs> so it was only on, sp on Spanish and Portuguese. And we gathered uh, about 400 uh, respondents, and mostly adults. As you can see, the ages uh, were varied a bit, but mostly we had teenagers and young adults responding to the surveys. We asked the adults what their uh, occupational field was, and you can see we had a lot of different um, professions they had. And uh, we'll see some interesting results about this. Well, the survey was divided in several chapters, and the first one was the respondent's profile, and then we asked what their uh, position was uh, towards, in general, nature. What was their engagement, their commitment towards nature? And you can see that uh, Adults were more engaged, significantly more engaged in going outdoors, in uh, living in nature, in going for a walk or whatever. Also the same for protected areas. I think children don't even quite know what a protected area is, so this was expected and ad adults responded they were more engaged in going for protected areas. Uh, also adults showed a higher degree of concern with environmental issues in general, and we asked also only to adults what were what uh, self-evaluation of their awareness level. And in general, adults said they had a uh, awareness degree of about four in five possible degrees. So let's see how the rest. Well, adults presented a, a greater engagement toward nature than children. Also, Portuguese respondents were more engaged than Spanish respondents. Uh, professionals from, from life sciences and uh, territory sciences like geography or 
uh, in Spanish there's a profession like mountain engineer. Uh, biologists were more concerned than other professions, like mainly architects, constructors, marketeers, and advertisers. I think this is quite interesting because constructors and uh, land planners, or in a practical way, builders, cons constructors, they, they are tailoring our landscape and then they are not engaged whatsoever with nature. And also marketeers and advertisers probably are engaging in greenwash and they don't know what they are saying. <laughs> Well, another chapter was the perception on natural values in general, and we asked uh, uh, people to, to share some typical species of their regions, and mostly people were correct. They, they said uh, Quercus and Pinus species were typical, but it was interesting that about 12% of adults uh, mentioned exotic species F as being typical in their region and about 8% of children did so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we also asked if there were important species and we also asked if there were species they didn't like. And you can see that ad adults don't like invasive species at all. <laughs> Most of the terms they mentioned in this question were related to invasive species, but children only mentioned one, uh, the top 10 comments were on the parakeet, with, w but also only 2.6% of children mentioned that. Against a great majority of adults responding, they didn't like inv invasive species. And it's important to highlight that we didn't provide any possible answers. It wasn't any checkbox. It was an open question. So people mentioned invasive species by their own. Um, referring to uh, their awareness on environmental threats, you can see that about 25% uh, of adults mentioned the invasive species as posing a problem, a problem, an environmental problem, but only 3.5% of adults, of children did so. And in terms of adults, the first threat considered was pollution, and the second one was uh, invasive species. That was a surprise for me. About the, well, uh, the chapter on well, I, I'm, I'm, uh, the, the, the survey was very complete and complex. I'm all, um, I am only presenting a small summary to be fast. But uh, if you want, then you, I can share you the complete report, which is in English. But another chapter was uh, on the knowledge of invasive species. A knowledge, a concrete knowledge, a specific knowledge of what species, what problems are taking place in their residence uh, areas. So we had these pictures, which are native and invasive species common to Portugal and uh, Spain. And half of those species are native and half of the species are invasive. And we asked people to tick uh, the invasive species and which are, were native and which were invasive. And for each correct answer, we gave one point, And for each wrong answer, we uh, uh, retrieve one point. So what happened was re referring to the age of the respondents, we see that adults know more species than children, uh, both animals and plants invasive species. Referring to countries, uh, Portuguese seem to know better their invasive plant species, but there were no difference referring to animal uh, uh, invasive species. Referring again to the occupational field of adults, we see that, again, life and land professionals are mo know more about uh, what species are invasive or wh which one are native. Uh, law professionals and uh, CEOs uh, uh, received the, the lower uh, grades for plants. Referring to animals, again, life and, si and land uh, professionals know better the species, but marketeers and students know less. And uh, combining plants and uh, animals, uh, again, life and land professionals had the be better scores and constructors and marketeers the lowest scores. So 
uh, referring to occupational field, uh, kind of a pattern is showing up. Then we correlated, or we tried to, we see, we'd, we'd try to see if there was any cor correlation between the knowledge, the grade obtained in that exercise, and their self-evaluation on, on their attitude towards nature, and we see that the greater the knowledge, uh, well, the greater the engagement, the greater the knowledge on their on, on invasive species. Perhaps, the more they go outdoors, the more they seek for protected areas, the more they are concerned, and the more they are committed with nature, the better grades they ob obtained. We also ask to rank or oh, five minutes. Okay, <laughs> uh, we ask people to grade the impact that invasive species pose on certain criteria and uh, we can see that on biodiversity it's clear that people know that it, they have a severe uh, impact and also in on ecosystem services agriculture and forest too but climate change is not that that uh, people are not that sure of what the the impact was also, health, economy, landscape, aesthetics, and cultural values have, have not that, uh, that strength in the answer that they pose negative issues. So, uh, adult, comparing the age of the respondents, a adults rated more negative impacts of invasive species uh, than, ch than children did, in general, for all criteria. Biodiversity, agriculture, and forestry were acknowledged by adults as suffering the greatest negative impacts from invasive species. Consistently, this is very curious for me because it was a surprise. Consistently, in all criteria, Portuguese respondents rated the impacts of invasive species more negatively than Spanish people, respondents. Um, and, of course, the occupational field of respondents also had uh, an impact on their perception of negative impacts. So we also asked if people agreed we should control invasive species. Adults said more uh, yes than children. Uh, Portuguese also agreed more than controlling invasive species than Spanish uh, respondents. And the occupational field had no difference on this topic. We also asked if they know any, if they knew any program on controlling invasive species in their region, and uh, there were different um, res responses. But all responses correlated with going outdoors, going to protected areas, and again to the engagement towards nature. The more people go, the more they know, and the more they agree we should control invasive species. About ethical concerns. Of course, plants generate less ethical concerns than animals do. Um, the more people agreed with the control, the m less ethical concerns they had, of course. Uh, th th this was uh, particularly interesting. Referring to the nationality, people ha uh, Portuguese respondents had more ethical concerns uh, with the control of animal invasive species. And I think this is related because in Portugal we have only one or two live projects controlling animals, tur turtoises. And in Spanish there are several. In, S in Spain there are several programs. So I think maybe a, a kind of a desensitization occurs when people are more informed and, more in, mm, and these programs are more visible and more explained to people. Uh, when we ask to art alternative methods to control, well, we come to prevention, to information, mostly. Well, uh, to sum up, uh, I think this project, uh, well, I'm sorry, it was a bit, a bit far, uh, a bit fast, but I can provide you the complete report. <laughs> I think this, for the Iber Iberian Peninsula, this, prov this study provided uh, important and valuable information on who knows what and all those previous questions. I think we should uh, make greater efforts to engage and to inform children and youth, also to less concerned professionals. Um, a theory was, was, or a pattern arose that, that was the more people go to outdoors and protected areas, the more they know. So I think protected areas are doing a valuable work on informing people. Mm. Uh, 
regarding the ethical questions, it's, I think it's really important to explain people why we are doing these projects, because it's important to explain why we need to also remove animals and not also only plants. And the alternative solutions come to prevention and information, so it is clear that effective communication and public engagement is needed. Well, and I think it's all. Yeah, thank you for your time. <laughs> Thank you for your lecture. We have time for questions or comments. No comment, everybody. No, we have two <laughs> comments. I have a question, to, question. To, to the audience, let's say, and I'm asking uh, whether uh, anyone knows about similar uh, research on, uh, on knowledge of the of the public in, in other countries in Europe, or whether you know any other research in, in other countries, if they have been completed? No, I personally don't, so. Well, we in Croatia did some similar research, but it was not so exhaustive. We just did on one, one survey on just maybe 1,000 people, like telephoning them and asking them, just a really few questions about the invasive species. I cannot tell you the results because I forgot, <laughs> <laughs> but we did something similar, but not as mm, so exhaustive. Mm -hmm. um, Anna Kembowska from Poland. Uh, I want to just say that um, I always felt that um, we can't, uh, we, I mean, uh, people who care about nature uh, can't uh, reach to the public uh, and that um, your, your researches sh show us that uh, really it is very important to, um, uh, to tell um, the people who care, who, um, uh, people from uh, fashion uh, world, for uh, for example, uh, and uh, health, uh, to um, excuse me, to, to persuade them uh, that the uh, nature uh, conservation is very important. And that's all. Yeah, and we saw that managers and lawyers and yes. marketers. Yes. They don't really know what we're talking about. We, the biologists and the conservationists. Yes. So, uh, and when I was talking to people before the, or after they filled in the, the survey, it was really important that we don't have to um, force them to understand. If, they, if we can bring them to nature, they will know by themselves. So the secret is to engage people to love nature. <laughs> Although uh, every day we are uh, live near and we uh, mm, have many prosperities from from the nature, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I was shocked that children, although there are so many programs going on on teaching children on all these topics, they are so less worried about it. So, I think we have a lot of communication work to do. So. <laughs> <laughs>